Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about five NHL players that have disappointed me so far. In the NHL season so far, we've seen some quality NHL players having disappointing starts for their team. So in this video, I'll be telling five that have disappointed me the most. Now I'm first going to start off with Max Pacioretty of the Vegas Golden Knights. Now he's a left winger at age 30, who drafted 22nd overall in the 2007 NHL draft with the Montreal Canadiens. And of course, this past offseason, he was traded to the Vegas Golden Knights from the Montreal Canadiens in a big, big deal, right? I think a couple of weeks before the preseason. And it was a huge deal, and with Vegas, they really needed him to step up. And of course, they had some other guys that they bring in. But really, when it came to Vegas, he was looked at as the star player coming in, and he was looked at as a guy that could really, really help the team going forward. And of course, being a former Montreal Canadiens captain, they were looking for a little bit of leadership from him as well. Not being the captain, but to be an alternate captain. I think that's what they have him as right now. They're also looking for him to rebound from his previous year. His last year with the Montreal Canadiens definitely did not go as planned. He regressed totally in the goals and in the points, and Vegas needed him to be a lot better in the points marker, but just as being an all-around player too. And his start so far has been less than ideal for the Vegas Golden Knights. In 19 games so far, he's gotten 6 goals, 2 assists, and 8 points. And that's barring a 2-goal game that he had yesterday versus the Coyotes. So his stats were even worse before yesterday. And it just goes to show how bad of a start the Vegas Golden Knights have had and how bad of a start Max Pacioretty has had. I think a big reason because of that is Paul Stastny is injured still. I think that would have been a great duo to have Pacioretty and Stastny. But it just hasn't worked out that way. Now, he does have a 55% course of 4 percentage, which is very, very decent. But when it comes to the points, we need to see a lot better from them. And I was certainly expecting a lot more from them too. Now, of course, points aren't the be-all, end-all, but I was certainly expecting him to be a lot better so far this season, and it really, he really hasn't come up to the task. Now, Patch Reddy has gotten on a little bit of a roll in the past week. He's starting to get a little bit better, so that's good news to see for Vegas Golden Knights fans, but right now, it's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting a big year for him alongside Paul Snasty to really put up points a lot more than in the previous season, and so far, it just hasn't really come up to snuff. The second guy I'm going to mention in this video is Anze Kobotar of the Los Angeles Kings. Now, so far, Los Angeles Kings have been pretty abysmal, and I think a big reason as to why is because Anze Kobotar has heavily regressed. Uh, offensively, defensively, he's still fine, but offensively, he's just tanked. Now, of course, Los Angeles Kings center at age 31 was drafted 11th overall in the 2005 NHL Draft. And last season, he had a brilliant year. It was, it was a great year for the Los Angeles Kings, but it was an amazing year for Anze Kopitar. I think he finished top three in the Hart, stand, or the Hart Trophy nominees, and he really did have a great year. And he was one of the main reasons why LA made the playoffs was because of his renaissance of offensive production. And while they had some other guys that were really contributing, Anze Kopitar was one of the main reasons why they made the playoffs. And even though they got swept, they still had a complete run. But, unfortunately for the LA Kings, this season has pretty much just been a dive right back down to the offense production that he had a couple of years ago, which is not good news for LA, because so far this season, he's been lackluster to say the least. So far this season, he's played 20 games, gotten 6 goals, 3 assists for 9 points. Now, that's decent numbers for like a third line, second line player, but when you're Anze Kobitar, the captain of the LA Kings, you're relied on to do a lot more than just 9 points in 20 games. You're supposed to be up there at like 15 points, 16 points, 17 points. You're, the LA Kings are pretty lucky that Kovalchuk's been decent, because without him, LA will be in the dumpster even more than they already are, and Anze Kobitar really slowing down production-wise is one of the main reasons why LA, I think, is in still last place. And I think another stat that's pretty baffling when it comes to Anze Kopitar is the 48.1% course for percentage. Now, that's just a normal stat there, but when it comes to his career for Corsi 4, the last time that he had an under 50 course for percentage was his rookie season back in 2007-2008. So, the production that he's had offensively, and of course the stats-wise when we show the numbers, it really has been a disappointing start for Anze Kopitar, and after that heart contending season, it's been an obvious drop-off from his production. And yes, while some of those stats may be because the other LA Kings players are not really playing well behind them, that is true. But Anze Kopitar has done really nothing to to be better than he has. I mean, when it comes to Anze Kopitar, he's supposed to be the guy in LA to not just drive the defense, but to drive some of that offense. And he did that last season, and he had a great season last season. And when it comes down to it, this season and last season have been completely different seasons so far. And while there still is a lot of games left to play, Anze Kopitar so far has been one of the most disappointing players, at least in my opinion. 
For the third player I'll mention in this video, I have Brayden Holtby of the Washington Capitals. Now, so far, of course, he's goaltender at age 29. He's getting up there in age a little bit. He was drafted 93rd overall back in the 2008 NHL draft. And, of course, this past season in the regular season, he was pretty, pretty bad. It was a pretty lackluster season for him. And then the playoffs happened. The Grubauer started the first couple of games. Then Holtby took over and led the Washington Capitals to a cup run. And, of course, winning the Stanley Cup. He's a Stanley Cup champion, and coming into this season, he's expected to have a much better season in the regular season at least, and to have a much better start. And he was one of the main guys that I predicted to have a rebound season. He had, I think he had a 909 save percentage or something like that last season. It was pretty abysmal numbers for what we were used to with Brandon Holpe. And we were thought that, hey, he was going to have a much better season after winning the Stanley Cup. He's going to have his confidence back, right? And so far this season, it really hasn't been what anybody has expected. So far this season, with 15 games at his start, he's had a 299 goals against average, which is not good. He has a 909 save percentage, which is not good. And so far, he has an he has a plus goal saved above average with 2.12, which is pretty solid. But again, when it comes to those stats like save percentage and goals against average, you want to see that a lot higher. And we're, we're, what we're used to with Brian Holpe is that 915 and 920 save percentage, really dominating in the regular season. But we haven't seen that in the last couple of years and this start isn't really helpful towards that. And Brian Holpe is one of the, my favorite players in the league, one of my favorite goaltenders in the league, so I'm pretty harsh on him when it comes to him playing badly, but when it comes to Washington Capitals, yes, they've been allowing more shots, they've been allowing more opportunities, but I feel like Brian Holpe was pegged as the guy to have a much better year than he did last season, and while he did win the Stanley Cup, I felt like in the regular season there was definite improvements to be made, but so far we just haven't seen that, at least to this point. The fourth player that I'll mention in this video is Alex Petriangelo of the St. Louis Blues. Now, when it comes to the St. Louis Blues, they've been an absolute disaster, especially when you compare it to the expectations that they had going into the season. And one of the main reasons why, I think, has been the St. Louis Blues captain, Alex Petriangelo, who has pretty much dropped off production-wise, and defensively, he's been a pretty much a dumpster fire. Of course, St. Louis Blues captain is a defenseman at age 28, fourth overall bat, or was drafted fourth overall back in 2008, and so far this season, it's not been what the Blues have wanted, and it's definitely not been what Petriangelo has wanted. So far in 20 games, he's had three goals, four assists for seven points, which is pretty solid for a defenseman, but when it comes to Petriangelo, you want to see at least a 40-point pace, and he has been way below that. So now, he right now is a 47% course more percentage, which is, for a defenseman, is okay, but you definitely want to see better than that. And again, this has been such a terrible start that Mike Yo was just fired a couple of days ago, so it has not gone as planned for the St. Louis Blues. They had big expectations going into the season, and they pretty much blown every single one of them. Guys like O'Reilly O'Reilly are playing well, but the goaltending has fallen short, and guys like Petriangelo have just been really, really not good defensively, especially when you compare them to last season. And for a team that just missed the playoffs last season, they were expected to really get better, especially since they had a, on paper, pretty solid offseason. But again, when it comes to the offseason champions, it usually doesn't quite work out as planned, and Petriangelo has, I think, been one of the main reasons why St. Louis is not in a playoff spot right now. For the fifth player I'll mention in this video, last but not least, I have Martin Jones of the San Jose Sharks. Now, you gotta listen to me for a second. I predicted San Jose to have a great start to the season, guys like Eric Carlson coming in. It was really a solid bet for San Jose to be a really good team, and while they are still playing pretty decently, I feel like guys like Martin Jones have been one of the main reasons why they're not in the President's Trophy race right now. Now, of course, Martin Jones is the San Jose Sharks goaltender at age 28. He went undrafted, and he's made it a high, he's had a long road to where he is right now. But uh, Martin Jones, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be. I'm going to admit it right now. He was my best in a trophy pick for this season. Now I know he doesn't play all that great in the regular season, but I thought I just had a little bit of a. I had a little bit of a gut feeling that he would win the best trophy. Now again, there is still games to be played, but so far this season, he has been the exact opposite of a Vesna goaltender. So far this season, in 16 games played, he's had a 3.01 goals against average, with points, 891 save percentage. Not good at all, and you definitely want to see that save percentage over 900 at least, but he has definitely not had a good start to the season. Now, he's had a minus 2.75 goals against average, which again, not a good stat for his case of, of being the starting goaltender there. And while I think that San Jose has gone off to a good start, it's definitely not because of Martin Jones, and it's because of guys like Timo Meyer and 
and Thomas Hurdle really carrying the load offensively. But when it comes to goaltending, it's been pretty bad. And especially uh, Martin Jones, he has not been one of the reasons why San Jose has been good so far. And again, while we all know that Martin Jones is a better goaltender in the playoffs, at least that's what his history entails, I felt like Martin Jones, I just had that gut feeling that he'd be playing very, very well in the regular season. Now, again, there is still games to be played, but so far this season, he's been one of the more goal disappointing players in the league. And especially when it comes to goaltenders, I expected a lot more from him. Even if I didn't pick him to get the Vezina Trophy, I expected him to be more in the upper echelon of goaltenders this year. And also, what I noticed from San Jose games, especially the ones that Martin Jones starts, is that Martin Jones has been pretty inconsistent when we talk about his overall game this season. I've seen games where he's been absolutely phenomenal, and he's looked like the best of trophy winner that I was pegging him to be, but then he goes out and lays like five goals in two periods, and then you think, oh well, we're back here again. And when it comes to Martin Jones, he needs to find that consistency. And with the San Jose Sharks, I think the defense also defensively needs to find that consistency. And once they get that blend, San Jose Jose will definitely be off to a great winning streak. And if you like, once Martin Jones finds his game, San Jose will be right back in the President's Trophy race. But with the five players that I listed in this video, there's bound to be at least a couple that rebound throughout the second half and have a much better season throughout the second half of the season and really start to carry their stats up. Uh, probably guys like Max Patchery will get better. Guys like Brayden Holpe will probably get better. So a couple of these guys on the list will probably get better. But again, these are the disappointing starts of the season, and these are the five that I think deserve that credit the most, or I guess non-credit. But of course, with the five players I listed in this video, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the players that I listed in this video? Do you think they're disappointing? Did you expect them to have the stars? And of course, with you guys, which players have disappointed you so far this season the most? Now, if you want some more grab goodness, you can watch this video or click on the card if you want to about the William Nylander video and if he'll get traded soon. But of course, that's going to be it for today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on the video, the five players I listed, and the disappointing players to you guys. Again, happy Thanksgiving to all the American listeners. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.